啊，大家好啊，非常高兴能在这里跟大家啊一起交流啊。嗯 ，Hello everyone, it's my pleasure pleasure to be here to 啊、uh, 嗯、uh, share the 啊、uh, presentations 啊啊 on top of 啊、uh, 啊、uh, ，it's my pleasure to 啊、uh, share 啊、uh, this presentation on the needs of the metric to engage with open source communities. Uh, with Daniel today. Uh, my name is William Zhang. Uh, I'm an open source technical expert at Huawei, and I'm also a, a member of AFG uh, Software Foundation. Uh, I'm also a Chaos participant. And hi, this is this is Daniel Izquierdo. I'm I'm the CEO of Viterja, a company doing software development analytics and ISPO and OSPO consultancy. I'm part of the board of directors at the Inner Source Commons, and then I'm part of the governing board at Chaos Community as well. So today uh, we'd like to share with you uh, this presentation that Willen and I we've been discussing about for for a while. So if you think about open source, we can say that safely that open source is everywhere, right? That uh, you can either consume software or produce software. You can be part of the community or not, but most of the software that we are using nowadays is open source. Um, and this is built on top of, uh, well, using as an umbrella open source foundations, right? So we can think of the Linux Foundation, Eclipse Foundation, the Apache Software Foundation, etc. And these are neutral places where, where companies, corporations can safely uh, share code with the specific rules in, in the playground, right? So there are certain rules about how to produce software, how to be part of the community, how to consume that software, how to redistribute that software if you are using open source. Um, however, it's not clear how to measure the return of, of investment of all of these. So the question I have here for the audience today is, what is the value of working in the open, right? So what 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 is it worth working in this open way um, and even participating with, with potential competitors? So this talk is all about this. It's about introducing some of these aspects it's about introducing the KS community, which is the acronym of Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software. And it's about introducing to you uh, open source tools to understand uh, open source communities and specifically to be able to make proper decisions on top of them. So William, one of the questions that we had at the beginning was, uh, what, what does it mean for you uh, success? What does it mean for Huawei success? Uh, it's like the company just want to uh, make uh, some influence uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, into the uh, market or into the uh, community. So, so I think the leadership and all the growth of the community is quite important. Indeed, uh, that's that's a good point. So, if 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 we think, for instance, about influence, which is one of the business goals that we may have here in this slide. Uh, might be influence may mean uh, about being the technical leader of a community. Influence may mean about being a, a good citizen and being across several open source projects. May mean about donating internal software, proprietary software as, as open source. So you can gain influence in in very different ways. And because of this, basically success will mean different dif different things for you than maybe for Will and maybe for me. So th there are there are different ways of thinking of this and there are different ways of measuring this. Oh, yeah, um, back to the uh, topic. Uh, uh, 20 years ago, I heard about open source uh, when I play with the uh, Linux. Uh, it doesn't make money from the open source business in China back then. And uh, I was glad to be a six of initial committer and participate in the development of uh, uh, ASF projects. Uh, it was my dream job since I could work uh, on open source project in my daily time. Um, from my observation at that time, uh, only few people have the chance to work on the open source project as a full-time job. Um, uh, 15 years later, I know a bunch of people are hired to uh, work on these uh, Apache projects. And uh, more and more startup company uh, make money from uh, this uh, Apache uh, project, which originally uh, originally from China. Mm. Back then, uh, we don't 
don't have many meetup uh, in open source uh, uh, or open source conference back then. Uh, Needs the user group in Beijing was the only one I I joined uh, about 15 years ago. Uh, but now uh, there's a, a bunch of meetup every week for different uh, open source projects in Beijing. Um, there was uh, three reasons for the popularity of the open source in China from my observation. Uh, the rise of uh, cloud, especially public cloud. More and more big company are embracing, uh, embracing uh, open source, uh, such as uh, Alibaba, Huawei, Baidu, Tencent, uh, donated a lot of projects into uh, named foundations or Sensef uh, or uh, up to the software foundation. And uh, uh, venture capital is shifting their focus to uh, B2B open source enterprise startups, uh, PinCap, uh, Kellinger's, uh, Giti, uh, which is doing the business uh, uh, open source, got a lot of VC funding. Uh, open source is one key word in the government's um, uh, five years plan. And uh, it's give a great signal uh, that a lot of resources will be put into open source. Even open source is becoming a buzzword, uh, but few people have really experience of the open source in China. So we need um, not new organizations to help us with that. Yeah, and, and for this, I'd like to, to introduce the, the concept of OSPO. So OSPO stands for Open Source for an Office. And this is this is like a long definition of this, that by the way, this is a good place, the to-do group is a good place for, for this kind of resources. This is this is a Linux Foundation group focused on open source and large corporations. Um, and the idea is how you can make the most of open source within your, uh, within your company. Um, and for this, all of the different departments that are involved in uh, should have like operations and expectations aligned with how open source works. So we can think of uh, human resources, we can think of a uh, marketing team, we can think about legal, security, taxes, we can think about even business development. So all of these departments, they have different strategies to move forward into the, 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 the several objectives that they have at some point. Um, and, and, and if we want to make open source, let's say a success within their daily operations, we need this office. So then open source is supported and served and explained within the walls of the company in the right way. So OSPO is, is like this, this discussion. Of course, there are different flavors of OSPO. If we think about um, having uh, an OSPO in universities is probably probably different than having an OSPO in a, a large corporation. And probably that's different from, from having an OSPO in, in the government, right? At, uh, either in China or here in Europe or in any other place. So for this, there are, uh, my recommendation would be that you have a look at the different, these three different places. OSPO++, which is pretty focused on universities, governments, and civic institutions. Uh, OSPO Zone, that recently uh, appeared in the, let's say, in the context of OSPO and raised by the Eclipse Foundation, together with others, about you know sharing and promoting the materials on good governance uh, for open source plan offices. And then the to-do group, which is the oldest in the, in the group um, that started years ago, um, and the idea is about uh, creating good practices and how to collaborate and, and share tools and ideas and, and concepts uh, about how to successfully and effectively run open source for, uh, program offices and specifically open source projects and, and engagement with, with them. Oh, um, back to the uh, cases of Huawei, uh, we have three stages uh, of using the open source software. Uh, first stage is uh, using open source software uh, directly, and then we uh, contribute into the upstream uh, at the same time. And uh, uh, the third stage is uh, we launch a lot of uh, open source projects uh, to the community. When we talk about uh, uh, our next slide, please. Oh, okay. Uh, in these pictures, uh, just use uh, more than 100 uh, 
property software foundation projects. Uh, if you have hundreds of uh, product line, you may have the dependency of the uh, thousands of the open source software uh, directly or indirectly. It could be a hard work to manage uh, the information about these uh, open source projects. Uh, besides of the open source license compliance, we also need to take care of the lifecycle management of the open source software. It's a tremendous work to collect the developer status and the community health information of these open source projects. Uh, Huawei uh, built the projects on top of uh, open source uh, software, such as uh, Linux, uh, OpenStack, and Kubernetes. And we did a lot of contributions uh, back to these communities. And uh, when we participate uh, in open source development, uh, we are quite interested to know what kind of work we were done um, in the open source community. Open source software is an important part of the Huawei uh, computing uh, ecosystem uh, strategy. We launched four open source based uh, software projects, Open Eura, Open Gauss, Open Logan, and uh, Mindspot recently. When we built uh, this open source community from scratch, we need to know the community status, such as uh, uh, contributor growth, growth uh, contributor growth, to help the community manager to polish the open source project promotion plan. Um, yeah, uh, we are not that long. Um, I was introduced to the chaos by looking for some tools to collect the data I mentioned earlier uh, by attending the bi-weekly uh, chaos uh, a, uh, Asia Pacific meeting. I got to know Matt, Don, Sharon, and uh, Daniel. Uh, it's a pleasant journey for me to join a community with people who share the same interest in to know better about the open source project. Yeah, um, and, and just a bit more a bit, a bit about chaos. So um, we are we are working in two main areas. One of them is about uh, defining from a more theoretical perspective what a metric is and and how they belong to different contexts. For instance, on the left, you can see that we have uh, the common metrics, diversity and inclusion, evolution, risk, value, and so on. So these are metrics. This is how we are defining metrics for each of them, like uh, uh, what is what is uh, uh, what are metrics related to risk assessment about open source or about the evolution of open source projects? If they are growing, if they are mature enough, if they are stable, etc. Or even more, if if we can think about diversity and inclusion, if we have a diverse set of people involved in the development of the projects, and if if uh, from an inclusion perspective, if they are um, getting better, or how we can improve uh, DNI in those. So. There are there are some more theoretical discussions where we are defining metrics basically, and then on the right you can see chaos software. So we'll talk today specifically about Grimoire Lab, but there are there is another piece of software called Augur, um, and there are some others that you can you can look around, and then there are certain initiatives in the chaos community. So what what I like to highlight here in this in this this slide today is that. Uh, communities such as chaos are great examples of open source engagement and then i i've had the pleasure to to work with willem uh, to advance into the understanding of open source health and open source communities and then later in at the inner source commons for instance so this is a good example of building building relationships between china and spain and hopefully we had the opportunity to meet each other in person right so let's see yeah yeah uh, yeah this i just showed the uh, uh uh, chaos meetup in China, and uh, uh, we hold the two uh, chaos China uh, meetup with uh, great support from the chaos community. Uh, first one was held in uh, Shanghai uh, last year. Uh, uh, the second one is held in Beijing this year, and uh, we uh, had uh, more than uh, fifteen people join the meetup to talk about the metrics which related to open source project development and community health. Uh, they are uh, researchers uh, of the uh, measurement of the uh, open source project, uh, community manager of the open source uh, project, uh, mentor of the open source project. 
software engineer who implement the metric dashboard of the open source uh, project health. Um, and now regarding open source tools, so we've been discussing about uh, metrics, we've been discussing about business goals and so on. And then I'd like to introduce here uh, Grimoire Lab, which is part of the of the chaos community. Um, Grimoire Lab started uh, years ago, uh, so let's say formerly known as Metrics Grimoire, where Metrics Grimoire came from academia uh, doing uh, empirical software engineering. Uh, I, I'm indeed one of the original authors of uh, of Metrics Grimoire and Grimoire Lab, part, part of the tool chain. Um, and I'd like to highlight here, uh, this is the, 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 um, the motto of the community, which is open source tools to provide software development insights. And there are two main areas here. On the, on the left, we have open source tools. Why, why, is it, why it's important to use open source tools? So basically you are making business decisions based on data, based on metrics, based on KPIs, and those metrics um, are coming in this case from open source. So you can check how those metrics are gathered, how those metrics have been developed. Let's say how, how the, the algorithms behind all of these metrics. So being open source is key to be sure that you are making the right decisions, that you can trace back those decisions and how those metrics are being retrieved and you can understood and everything. So you can do certain uh, due diligence analysis, if I can say this. And then on, on the right, what, what uh, I wanted to highlight is to say that, well, it doesn't matter if you are doing um, open source development or you are doing internal development, or if, if there is no uh, even any different about, about both ways of developing software. The thing is that uh, you should have metrics around because then you will, you will improve how you are uh, developing software because having metrics, which is not the final goal, it's just another tool, useful tool to make those decisions. And just an example, while, while we were preparing the slides, I thought, well, there is this service called Rondo.io, which is free, by the way, for, for anyone. Uh, there is a cloud version uh, self-hosted with private access if you are interested, paid, paid version, but there is, there is this free version. And what we were doing was to analyze the Huawei projects, the four that, that Willem mentioned before, uh, so this is the URL, kaulon.io slash project slash 5269. If you want to have a look at, at the development of those projects donated to the Open uh, by Huawei, you have the data there, so you can check what's going on. Um, then regarding Grumar Lab, really, really quick here, because I don't really want to enter into the details. So <clears throat> what we can see um, on the... Uh, on the very center is basically the, the different data sources on the left of the of the schema, the architecture. And then this is split into three main steps. So the first one is about gathering data. So uh, Grimoire Lab supports 30 plus different uh, data sources, uh, including GT. So we'll see now a, a use case, an example uh, that we, it's part of this conversation today. And then this all of this data is gathered by Percival. So Percival is exporting these into JSON documents. And then, <clears throat> sorry, everything is stored in, into a database. We are using Elasticsearch in this case. Um, there are certain capabilities to deal with identity. So you can check developer activity across the different data sources, across the different projects. You can have the same information at the level of companies, etc. And then there is a second step where all of this information is enriched. So by enriched, it means that there is certain data processing where data is now much more uh, tuned into the visualization needs. And this is the, 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 the very first, the, the very third part and last part of the, of the process of the tool chain for Grimoire Labs where, with, where, where you are visualizing all of this information in, in a dashboard way as we saw previously. Um, we can see, we can, we, we can go through a couple of examples that I think are, are well, we thought that they were um, interesting to have a look at. So this is for instance, the community shape and corporate interactions in, in, in the case of the CNCF ecosystem. Um, in, in this chart, you, you can see small pink dots. Those are developers. And then in the middle of those big stars, you, those are the projects. So the, the one we can see on the left is Kubernetes, which is the biggest one, the biggest star. 
And then there is a relationship between uh, this pink dot and the and the blue square if there has been at least one contribution. For if, if you're interested in learning a bit more, you can see and you can learn about this in the IEEE software paper that you can see on, on the right. There are, of course, other analyses that you can do. This is another use case. There are, by the way, 70 plus different use cases covered in Remark Lab. So this use case is about open source development and predictability and efficiency. This, this was an analysis done for the same community. That again, this has been published in IEEE software in case you are interested. But then in the in the middle of the of our chart here, you can see some squares in uh, in orange. So the left one is about the, the increase. So what we learned here is that uh, for the first, let's say, code reviews of certain size had an, a lineal increase. So basically, the more the bigger that uh, code review was, the the more time it needed. But the growth was lineal increase. But then if you reach certain levels, as you can see the the the, the orange square on the right, that increase was exponential. So we had a specific um, um, advice here about uh, you know dividing, uh, making the code review processes the the, the 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 size of the commit much more smaller. So then you can keep in the lineal growth instead of having this exponential growth in the time to to close to to review to merge all of these processes. Oh, back to the Huawei contributions uh, to the uh, Garmin Lab. Um, it's like uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's really quite interesting about the community house of the open source software we uh, project we launched. And, uh, and because we host this project uh, in GT, uh, so um, uh, so when I start to use the uh, Gram Lab to collect the data, uh, and it's um, um, unfortunately uh, um, uh, Gram Lab doesn't support to collect the data from the GT. Uh, and uh, after spending some time on the code, I just found we can leverage the Perseria plugin uh, feature to fill the gap by adding uh, GT back backend to collect the data. So we start the discussion in the GitHub issues of the Gram Lab and uh, for supporting loading the plugin in a more easy way. Then we start to maintain the GT plugin in the GitHub uh, group, uh, G uh, Gram Lab uh, GT. Uh, now we are using uh, Gram Lab to collect the data uh, of the open URL and uh, mind sports uh, to uh, from the GT um, to provide useful information for the uh, community manager to use. Uh, some of the conclusions. Uh, when consuming the product or producing open source software, um, metrics is the key to first to uh, make uh, data-driven uh, decisions. Um, as you are not alone, uh, there's a open source community, open source software community to share, learn, reuse the software. And uh, to be more um, with the help of the community uh, and, uh, of the knowledge sharing and uh, uh, software experience sharing, it, it could be more effective. Yeah, and, and I would say that the this this uh this relationship with, with Bill together and, and and using chaos as a starting point. Um so basically we we were able to to build something together that was useful in this case for Huawei, where we you know we added the previous experience of the of Viteria in this case, Remote Lab community with the, uh to, to Huawei in the sense of having GT in in Glumar Lab and the other way around. So thanks to Huawei, the Glumar Lab uh, community and other companies, Arbitria, are are having now GT as another data source to to be able to to analyze project health, to analyze project efficiency and community shape as the use case we saw before. So I would say that this is a really great uh, use case, uh, really really success as this way of working together upstream between between different companies. And then this is the sentence that we have there, right? That says, if, if you want uh, if you want to go fast, there is a typo there, by the way, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So we've been able to go far by being together. 
because now in this case uh, the community collaborated to have the more lab and GT. And this is this is these are the basics of open source. This is open source, and this is what I what I love from them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, the chaos community uh, is decided to uh, foresting uh, open and welcoming a environment for contributors. Anyone can join the mailing list, participating in a Zoom meeting, and uh, all contributing uh, to any of the uh, projects uh, at any time. Um, now we also have a Chinese version of the uh, uh, WeChat public account to uh, publish events of the Chaos China. And uh, recently we just uh, 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 launched a Chinese uh, Chaos podcast and uh, you can scan the uh, that code uh, uh, to 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 find out more information. Okay, uh, this is that's it. all. <laughs> Thank you William, for for your time. Thank you to the audience for your time as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all, and uh, we are uh, waiting for you to join the community. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. -bye.